Yo guys, bro Professor Theo here on Common Sense. Today we're continuing our muscle group specific series and when I read through the comment on the last video about the pecs, what I saw most requested was the back. Some people ask specifically for lats or upper back, but yeah, that, that's what I saw the most. So today we're doing demon back attack and please let me know in the comments which muscle group you'd like to see next, okay? But even mentioning that some people ask for lat specifically or upper back specifically i was thinking like should i divide it because that's the thing when we say chest like it's a big muscle but it's just one muscle really uh, that needs certain different things but we're just talking about one muscle when we say back there are many different muscles that do work together a lot and sometimes uh, less and you know so but i just realized for this lecture format i'm just like I, I have to talk about it all. I guess some muscle groups, maybe the legs too, just has to be a longer video, okay? Um, but yeah, and I also realized there's no point to be trying to draw back after trying a few times and failing. That was not helpful, whatever I managed to draw. So let's do it like this today. So okay, generally, as bodybuilders, we think of mostly the back having three areas. There is like a fourth parenthesis that I'm gonna say. We have the upper back that also kind of includes it. We're just talking geographically <laughs> on the back, kind of some mid-back muscles. Too. It's just mid-back is really something we don't talk so much about because generally for different pulling movements, there's going to be those that target the upper back more and the lats more. And then there is a little bit of a spectrum in there, but you see, those are generally how we categorize pulls. And we're going to get to kind of pull-ups or pull-downs and rows. And uh, yeah, well, there's a lot to be said there too, but basically the upper back, it's the traps, but not just the upper traps, the mid traps and the lower traps. And around the low and mid uh, traps, there's also muscles called rhomboids that have similar functions, okay? And then we have the rear delts that we can also include in the upper back. And the, all these muscles, they mainly are responsible for moving the shoulder blades in different directions that can be to, together with moving the position of the arm too, but generally, the, those kinds of movements in different directions is what all the upper back muscles are uh, responsible for uh, and just stabilizing the shoulders and all that too, right? Uh, then we have the lats, which it really just is one muscle here, but it's quite big and um, it, it has many different functions. It attaches up here and, and um, instead of talking about like all the functions, because as bodybuilders, you I'm going to get to my personal experience with lats. It's a bit tricky for me. But yeah, of course it helps to know the function. But with a muscle like the lats, it's like you you got to build a connection to the lat. Because what we could say is generally the lat in different ways moves the upper arm in towards your body. So that could be like a chin up here. Could be, you know, a pull up that coming from the side here. But you see in different ways moving the arm in towards you like that. Then there is like... There is a muscle that we rarely talk about, teres major, that it's sort of, it's really, it could be like, oh, it's just an extension of the lat. And that's the thing, when you are someone that's upper back dominant, like me, that we're gonna get to, uh, usually you have developed a, a teres major, and it's the lat or the lower part of the lat even, that's lacking a little bit. Um, then we have the lower back, so, the, 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 of course here, uh, but the, the thing with the lower back that's kind of interesting, of course the, the, the lower back, it, it, it does extend the spine like this through range of motion, but often it just works uh, isometrically to keep you stable, like on a deadlift you, you're you not going to take your lower back usually through a huge range of motion like um, actually extending the back from a very rounded position or something, a little bit, a lot of it is just the lower back like resisting uh, you know, uh, as you pull with a lot of other muscles. Um, but the, the interesting thing with the lower back is that uh, if your lower back is underdeveloped, it's pretty much a sign that your program is kind of crap because usually when you have good programming for the entire body, you don't have to think so much about training the lower back. It's more about how do I not hit it too much? Because you're going to realize the lower back, on many exercises, when you're not thinking of it as this is a lower back exercise, you're still training the lower back. Like, so think, we all understand on deadlift variations, right, that we use the lower back a lot. But even on a squat, of course, we, uh, the lower back, um, even certain, like rows, when they're not chest supported, it may be not the heaviest uh, pressure on the lower back, but it's still something. The point is, like, even when I do a shoulder press on, on a, like a push day, I can have to use my lower back. 
So the point is that even when it's not maximal uh, all the time, the lower back in a big program, a uh, holistic program like that, it just gets a lot of work. So many times it's more about um, how, how do I not overwork my lower back so I can do everything I want and then uh, it's going to get enough to be developed. Like, I, yeah, I'm probably going to show some pictures of my back here and my lower back. I, I have not done many deadlift variations even in a long time and I do like nothing almost that I think of it as, oh, I'm training my lower back now still. It's quite jacked still. But that, that's the last thing. The lower back, it is mainly like spinal muscles. There, there are several muscles here, the quadratus lumborum on the sides even uh, and that. But we, we really think a lot about the erector spinae just down there. But th there is a point to that the, there are muscles along the spine that run up. So like when we talk about the upper back and the mid back that, yeah, you know, Apart from these muscles I told you about, there are also spinal muscles uh, beneath there. And of course, they do the same like when I talked about the lower back. Like, uh, you know, th what they actually do, those spinal muscles, is like, uh, right, extending my spine, well, no matter like where on the back that is. But so we're going to get to it when we get to programming a bit. But the point is that maybe... Then there are certain movements we're just going to have, to have in our program, to hit absolutely everything on that back, right? So, there are three things that I would say are the most important things to think about, like kinds of exercises. So it's deadlifts or hinges, you know, because you're using so much weight, no matter, like whether it's a Romanian deadlift or a standard deadlift from the floor, and you're like so much, like it's the lats, some people even build uh, some lats from that, this I never have really. Um, I guess it would probably if we experiment with different grips and stuff, but really it's like, apart from of course a deadlift being like a lower body, like, like depending on your build and what variation you do, but thigh, glutes of course, but then the lower back, pretty much everything that runs along the spine and the upper back, you know, it, it's kind of crazy. When I saw my traps grow the most, the fastest back in the day, it was like after two years of training, I had some traps, but I just focused on the deadlift from the floor a lot. And I got that a lot bigger, regular deadlift. That blew up my traps like crazy. And it's kind of funny because you don't think of it when you're doing heavy deadlifts. Where you, you never think of it like, oh, my traps. <laughs> but you do hit, it's such a huge stretch with all that weight. And you're going to do some pulling. That's, that's a lot of the upper back work on the deadlift. Like just not so big of a range of motion, just resisting. Just uh, being upright with all that weight hanging from you, right? So the deadlifts, it's, it's almost... Even some people, there are some lats, like it, it's basically everything except the lats, I would say, uh, you hit to some extent. You're getting huge deadlifts, especially the upper back, and the lower back is just going to be yoked uh, from that. But I, I do like stiff-legged or Romanian deadlifts for this too. We're going to talk about programming, like when to do these things. Pull-up variations, we could throw pull-down uh, in there too, which is that the, the pull-up to me, uh, when, when you're hanging freely and especially adding weight, it's just a more massive movement. Like you're gonna have to brace a bit more uh, with, with the core, um, but even just a stretch compared to a pull down machine, some kind of cable, when you're hanging there, like it's just, I cannot explain it better. I just feel that it's a better stretch. It's always been a more effective uh, exercise for me. So we're gonna get to when we bias things because now it depends on the type of lifter we are, the type of body. Uh, we have, but generally, you know, all pull-ups are great. They're going to build your lats and upper back to some extent. It's just not that much lower back going on when we pull our like hair, just hang with our lower body, right? But generally, like a chin-up or just a closer grip when you pull like this would be a bit more lat biased. And when you do some kind of wider grip, you move, you know, you're going to move more shoulder blade move, move motions, like not just pulling your arm close to the body, right? But both of them are great. I would, you know... I would for many like to have both of them in and or very different times having, you know, taking one in and one out uh, of the program. Uh, then rows, okay? So there are like different kinds of rows, but generally when we're like lats, pulling, there, there are so many nuances of this that we're going to come to, but generally like pulling from a higher angle around here is generally going to hit more lats and being more horizontal or lower in some kind of row, we're generally hitting more upper back, but it's again, just like I talked about the chest, we're just shifting focus, right? We can never completely eliminate something like that, like with some isolation exercise almost, but with these bigger ones. Uh, but rows, 
So you have your seated rows and, and you know, depending if, if you're going to take a close grip and really lean into it and pull low, now you're going to make something like a seated row quite laty. While if you sit more straight out, okay, maybe lean into stretch a bit, but with a wider grip, now we have lots of upper back uh, going uh, in this. But so with rows, what I like, I like to have some stronger row every once in a while, like a barbell row or a T-bar row, you know, and what I'm saying is like th those kinds of exercises, rows, like barbell rows, I, to me they're great for beginners because it's just such a huge, ex it's going to hit like everything on the back. Then I like it and I, I think it's a cool exercise. I want to get back to it. I had a little bit of issues with elbows with that. But for instance, I would say beyond the point, I do not think like that a barbell row is ever going to be the best lat exercise for most people because you're, you're going to be heavy, you're going to be bracing with your body so much. Um, and yeah, you're just gonna pull high like this. Like I'm just not gonna see that for most people that it's gonna hit the lats uh, a lot. But so what? We, that kind of exercise is still good for like the rhomboids, entire upper back, some lower back in there too, of course. But what I want to come to is like those are like the stronger rows, if you see what I mean. Like less isolated. When we still when we think of it like just as a huge exercise when we hit a lot. It's not like ones. We're not targeting really one area, maybe then, okay, the upper back a bit more than lats, pretty much. But if we want to isolate the upper back area, more upper mid back if you want, what we want is something when we take a lot less weight and we pull a lot stricter, we still like to get like a good stretch, but now we're going to want to have a really wide grip on whatever it is. It could be a barbell. I, I program this for some clients where you don't really row it. It's all, you, you lift it more like this. But whatever it is, it could be a seated row, it could be some kind of machine. But what we want is a wide grip, kind of flared elbows and pull high. Like so the complete opposite to some lat would look something like this, something lat dominant. And this would be something very upper back, like rear delt. Uh, dominant so I like to get that in too and uh, yeah so bias lats this is like now we've talked a little bit there are some general things here like you know a weight the chin up could be for most people all great compound exercise for lats and some kind of row here all great compound for their kind of rest upper back you know and, and then get the deadlift in every once in a while there's some more upper back but even uh, lower back as well but something I realized but someone like me is that I'm actually quite upper back dominant and it's been a little hidden for me uh, because when I started training at home, I did pull-ups and so and then definitely my lats first got ahead of my upper back. But when I had access to gym and to everything I wanted to do, it's just like lats have been tough for me. And like I mentioned earlier, get this upper, the terrace major and the upper lat always been meaty but it's been lacking the lower part and I got some comments uh, from some people about that too and to me I know anonymous people that don't show their physique you know experts but they, they, it was like I, did, I don't take offense to that it was more confirming like okay then I would say it's unfair to say that I don't have good lats it's more like my upper back is freaking insane so it outshines the, <laughs> the lats I do have some lats but yeah so I've been really experimenting lately I wanted to hit the lats more uh, and just focusing and trying a bit more like that has really like already the last two months or so I can already see that I've gained like width from this. So when I say about the lat, can we talk about like even hitting the lower and upper lats, even if it's the same muscle, of course the terrace major could kind of count as the upper lat. Uh, in a sense too, but it, it has been shown with this, this uh, science and studies trademark, it has been shown that you can have like local hypertrophy even in a muscle, so even more so uh, in a big one. Um, I, I, I don't quite know where I was going now, <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, the, the lats, where was I going before? But anyway, like what I noticed now, okay, let's, let's put it like this, the lat, like if you hang like this on a chin up, we're gonna get a pretty damn good uh, stretch on our lat all the way up here. And we can do, like I said, a seated row. But it's like, the point is that the lat where it's really the most, it's not here or here, when it's really the most stretch, it's some kind of diagonal angle. And I've also found, I found that it's not just about the angle, it's about finding an exercise where it's, it's hard to leverage anything other than the lats. That, it's kind of strange. It kind of puts the lats in a weak position, but for this reason, it's like easier to connect with them. It's like, 
it's easier to use the lats and feel that you're using them, but it's like heavier. Those kinds of exercises will be heavier. You will be able to use less weight. So the point about that is like some, some exercises I've done, like a cable row, for instance, the diagonal, one hand, it's a good exercise, but this kind of, the angle has not truly actually helped me like necessarily hit the lats more. So what I found is these L-sit chin-ups that put you, because when you raise up your legs, you end up more in a position like this, but it's also, you cannot, you cannot cheat your way into something like this with the upper back. So th these ones uh, have really blown up my lats lately. I've been adding weight. I did today, I, first day I saw 90 kilos on the scale this morning on this bulk. So I'm happy about that because I, I, I'm happy with how I look at 90. I never looked like this at 90. But I added 20 kilos. I did three sets of five on this. And it's like a beastly exercise. But you can get far uh, without any weight on it too. Like I, I feel quite strong actually that I can use that uh, weight now. But yeah, it really, really, really helps with the lats. And so another one, this is a bit of an unusual one, but in the gym that I go to, there's a seated row that also has like a high cable. And so you can put your feet and, and I can just get into such a perfect, what I notice, it's not just the angle, because it's easy for someone that's upper back dominant with an angle to still with a diagonal angle kind of pull. I exaggerate just to show it, but there's a lot of those shoulder blade working muscle that's actually pulling. While if I put myself with the feet there or with LC chin up, it's so easy to actually pull. I exaggerate now, but you see the difference between pulling here, even if it's from that angle and pulling like here. So, so when I do it like this, it's almost like a lat isolation, but still see you want that into the pull. It's like pulling the elbow and it ends up low, you know, and th these kinds of exercises. The, 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 so there are also, we're going to get to some isolations. There are lat isolations, but even thinking like this, because I noticed that now that I found a couple of exercises that I like really connect with, now it's actually been easier to make other exercises more latty. Like, like there's a pullover machine, we're gonna talk about pullovers, but just after improving on these other exercises, now this machine feels best, better than ever to me. There's another pull down machine I haven't used in a while, but I, I can kind of feel the same. Like when I, if I go back to that, I'm gonna feel uh, that I can use my lats more. But so lats, I'll tell you, for some people, just a very tricky muscle. Uh, again, because it's like you can, it's like you can get away with getting really strong on almost any back exercise uh, without just developing that lower part of the lat. And you really gotta find the connection, the consciously drop the ego, drop weight, really find the variation that does that, okay? So bias the upper back, we all, already talked a bit uh, about that. like. <laughs> the, this this big stretch on the upper back in generally whatever kind of movement you do like because we're talking a barbell row if I would want to bias the lats I would try to as much as possible like this how I showed from the uh, I would try to pull like almost throw it in front of me so I can pull a bit like that while if I want to uh, bias the upper back like they're different I could do it stricter and actually round my back so I get a good stretch on all that meat up there pull like that right um, but I could also, like I said, take a wider grip um, so, so that I can I use less weight, but can therefore even more so isolate that upper back. And, and really, it's like the, m most, most rows will just hit the upper back well, but if you want to like really more bias it, isolate it, uh, I would really recommend this um, wide grip flared elbow mode. There are so many different you can do. We, we're going to get to how you can do this. Like if, if we compare bias lats and bias upper back on a lat pull down, for instance, it's called a lat pull down, but that's what I've had to learn throughout these years that it isn't like generally, yeah, pulling down, it's going to be more lats than if it's here generally, but mm, not necessarily it depends so much on how you do it. So we take a lat pull down. If I want to make it as a lat dominant as I can, I'm probably going to have to drop my weight a bit. Like, you know, I, I've always liked on the lat pull down the close neutral grip and pulling like this. And, you know, it's built some lats for me. It's definitely helped with strength in a chin up than that. But again, clearly it has just not hit that lower lat area. If that's what I want for my bodybuilding goals, I have to drop my ego, drop the weight a bit and isolate the lats a bit more. So what I would do with the same grip is just I would think more about pulling almost in front, to, in, more than coming down here so much. Pull here, right? And, and then I also don't have to necessarily get in, get that big stretch under, right? I could sit kind of here all the time, you know, I'm gonna get a good stretch 
on the little diagonal. While if I want to make it really upper backy, I would take a wide uh, grip and just kind of sit like this all the time and, and pull with flared elbows. And now it's suddenly, it's a very upper back dominant pull down. It's just gonna not hit the upper trap so much for the angle, but all the other traps and rhomboids, uh, right? But, okay, like there's the some things how to uh, bias. But yeah, protect the lower back. This is good and it's gonna go into programming as well. Like I talked about, the, the lower back with good, if you're serious about this and you have good overall programming, it's gonna be more about not overworking the lower back rather than uh, getting enough volume to hypertrophy the lower back. So, because I'm gonna suggest that you, that the back is like the muscle group that can tolerate and kind of needs the most volume and I'm going to tell you a bit how that can look like but for instance some of our deadlift movements maybe we want to do them on a lower body day like a leg day when we do squats and other leg stuff at the same time because those always hit the legs too right that's how I prefer to program it but then we cannot go into doing deadlifts having done so, like some of our lower back is all sore from the day before but maybe you want to train back the day before well the best ways to um, protect the lower back. Of course, pull down and chin up, pull up variations. It's like, it's like when, you, when you're hanging or just pulling something down, you're not, you're not gonna use your lower back much at all. But if we want like some amazing, like a biased upper back, like a seal row. A seal row is an amazing exercise overall. If you take a closer grip and pull more like that, now again, okay, we, we bring some lats into it still. To me, I, the, the variation I love the most is the wide grip that sort of pull like that. It's such a good stretch when it's weight pulling like that, right? It's a great exercise that it drop sets onto. Oh man, that hits the traps and rear that so well. But the point is though, no matter what variation you do, it's a chest support. You can pull, you can pull heavy weight, but barely use your lower back. You're sparing it because yeah, there's chest support. You don't have to keep yourself upright like that. So, you know, going with something like a seal row over a barbell row, if you're doing it the day before, you're gonna train legs and do some kind of deadlift variation, right? And there are many good chest supported rowing machines too, right? And, uh, you know, I just wanna say, just because I remember when I talk about this seated row with a higher attachment, like, of course, if you can just find a high cable and some, somehow s stay to the floor, you know, girls are luckier that way because on a regular cable machine, they might have enough weight to, to just sit and do that while many g guys won't. But the point is, don't necessarily need a fancy seated row with a high cable. Um, yeah, protect the lower back. That, that's mainly the thing. That's mainly the thing that, you know, you have to always be aware. How much am I using my lower back throughout the week? If you start feeling something, it's kind of like, where is the room to kind of change something to something more lower back sparing? Okay, but that would many times be the thing to opt for a chest supported variation uh, instead. You know, one that I tell you, regular seated row machine, one I love to do this kind of high flared elbow thing for upper back, is if it's a high enough cable on a seated row, you can take this and you kind of like push yourself back get behind the seating pad and use that for chest support. Just stretch everything out and like that. Amazing one. Um, completely lower back sparing. Um, uh, but yeah, if we talk about isolations for the back, like I, don't, I think the mostly not so necessary, honestly. Uh, it's just that some are easy to get in and maybe if we have a weak point, we wanna emphasize focus on something more, you know. When you have the pullover variations, so pullovers, there are many different ones, could be called pull downs. So if it's with a cable straight arm, push down even, I've heard. Um, but it's really the, the classic one is if we pretend I lie on a bench now, that you have a dumbbell go back, you see what we do, because so often we think of the lats, they're working with arm flexors, you know, that the arm is gonna bend as we pull. Uh, but this one, we're trying to isolate the lats. So, you know, typically most common to have some kind of bend, you know, not necessarily straight arms, you know. Um, but you, uh, if you get strong, you can have a C bar for that too. I'd like to do that. I have not found that I like the cable version, so I personally don't connect with them uh, very well. But I, I do like the, the pullover, with a C bar or dumbbell uh, on a bench like that. And then there are pullover machines that are unfortunately are quite rare. And that's, that's one thing I love with a gym. I've, I've just found <laughs> that they had this uh, machine, or I haven't just found it, but it feels like that because I've been looking for some of the machines. But a pullover machine, 
you know, often I don't think a machine is the best option if they're a decent machine. This is one where I gotta say that if you have access to a pullover machine, that, that can really help you with your lats. Um, but the C-bar or dumbbell, great, very interesting. For some people, they like the cable too. Um, reverse fly. So my favorite has always been that that's for more the upper, mid back, uh, and the uh, rear delt. Um, it depends on how you do them too. If you go really low weight and really strict, you could isolate the rear delts more. To me, I find that unnecessary. I, I find that if you have heavier weight, then just you, you're gonna work the rear delts as you start working with the uh, like traps too. But my favorite has always been having two cables. So high cables, even taking the wrist cuff, uh, even better that you don't have to hold anything. Cross your arms, you can, you can get the stretch you don't get in the pec deck machine uh, or with dumbbells. And it's a more uh, even resistance curve and just pull like that. And at the end, you know, you can like rip up partial reps or you can even do drop sets like that. It's amazing for, uh, well, the, the, the mid, upper back and the rear delt. You can do them with dumbbells. I've actually started doing them recently just because I haven't done them much uh, at all. Um, yeah, you know, this kind of thing. But, but it's like, what I find, you have to be very honest with yourself because um, you can cheat, so you can vary how much you cheat so much. Like you have to really monitor yourself that if you progress, did you actually progress or did you just start swinging more? What did you do, you know? It's okay, but especially the, the reverse pec deck is very good too. I'm gonna go on Jeff Nickbird science, uh, stretch mediated, how you pertrophy your length and the focus, you know, he can take one arm at the side in the reverse pec deck, do like that. And I put shrugs that I've started doing them once per week on like a misc day uh, recently. Um, but, but I have really good traps. And it's just for me, it's kind of like, uh, can I give, since I never did any shrugs, can I get them even bigger? But to me, honestly, I find that getting really strong on different deadlift variations and, um, uh, you know, rows, ro like different rows like this and deadlifts. It's like, it's going to do a lot for you with, with the traps. But, you know, why, why not? If you want to focus on them more, what I would say is um, find, find a variation. Like, honestly, among the worst is like uh, a barbell. I, I guess it depends on how you connect with it always. But a trap bar, excellent because you're more out to the side. And the, the traps, they technically don't just go up, they go in too. So uh, you can even find, I've used a, like a pressing, lying pressing machine. I've used the handles because the handles go inwards, you know. Um, but maybe consider having straps, like people that do like dumbbell shrugs and they can't hold it. Like th their grip is gonna fail way sooner than what the traps can shrug, you know. But yeah, th that could be something. And then we talked about pretty much everything. So programming, the way I think about the back is again, um, Think of it this way, like it kind of makes sense that the back is a tough, uh, or tough muscles generally. Because you know, when I'm standing right now, for instance, like yeah, some things on the front have to work a little bit to keep me standing, but it's mainly everything on the fire, as of, uh, everything on the backside that has to fire uh, all the time, you know, and so, so much, the, like the, the, the what, yeah, the, the posterior muscles, pretty much, they, they work so much more. I just feel like they're a bit more tougher. They can, they can handle and actually need a bit more volume to grow. So what I like to think of it is that two days per week where you actually do the pulling movements, like rows, pull-ups, chin-ups, um, those kinds of exercises, um, that's good. But for complete back development, we want to, on our lower body days, have these, like even squats, even squat variations, depend, even fr fr front squats will get quite a bit of upper back just from, you know, um, but lower back for any squat, of course, like we do get some back, in, but especially our hip hinge, like our, our deadlifts, our Romanian deadlifts are good mornings, right? And I, I just found through experimenting with myself and clients that, yeah, that works well to have like days when you pull and then days when you like hinge and extend the back, uh, like once or twice at least. And then as I said, if you're just gonna put these days next to each other, I, I've done pull a pull day on a Friday for a long time, having a lower body day on the Saturday. It's worked really well, but like I said, I just don't do anything that strains my lower back too much. And then I just feel like everything else is fine. I can, I can see consistent progress and I feel myself recover well. So. Pulling days, like that could be an upper body day, but it could be a pull, you know, push-pull legs. But those twice per week, 
And then the lower body day that includes the ex big exercises that are going to hit the lower, uh, lower back, the spinal muscles as well, once or twice uh, per week on top of that. But yeah, guys, I think that was it. Like the, there, I, I know that I'm going to remember so many things that I did. Like there are so many, there's so many exercises to do for the back because there are so many. Like dumbbell rows is one that I started experimenting with that I've never done much. That is a traditional one. But yeah, this last thing I can talk about, I guess. Um, that I find that I talked about this when I had Jeffrey Verity Schofield on my podcast. We completely agree on kind of like, like the thing is, if you do a, a row, like a cheat row, you take way too much weight. So you have to like, you, you get to almost upright. It's like you, you've effectively just started doing some kind of heavy sheet shrug. So it's not almost just upper back here. Like you're going to miss out on a lot of things that you actually want. But on the other hand, a lot with pulling, at least when you're beyond like some kind of beginner stage, a lot with pulling, if I'm completely strict like this with a barbell row or a seated row, I sit completely straight. Like when I come to some point where I can pull all the way, it's just not gonna be enough to have stimulated something. And this is something, guys, it's like we're just maturing as a lifter. There's no exact sweet spot, like you wanna be cheating exactly this much, but you know, you're gonna have to find it and be honest with yourself. Like, have I started yanking it too much with just my hips, you know, this weight? Or am I like actually just, like what, I, what I'm looking for is some kind of middle. Uh, again, there's, not, there's no way to describe exactly. But it's like on a seated row, I will, uh, if, if, let's say I do a close grip, I want to bias the lats a bit. I'm always gonna lean into a good stretch, but I'm going to pull some with my lower back to get back. And on this last few reps, maybe I start to pull like a bit more, but you see, I, I wouldn't want to take weight, so I feel like I'm like, ah, <laughs> but I can't sit completely still. There's gonna be something in the middle, always, you know. And, and I like on a barbell row, for instance, I always kind of liked, uh, if you start out quite strict, you just move a little bit with, a, like if the last two or three reps get a little bit more like this, it's kind of fine. And I, that's often how I say, with pulling exercises, if the, it depends on how many reps you do. But let's say the last 20 or 30% of the reps, if they, you lost some range of motion, that's a pretty good place to be, uh, okay? You don't wanna stop when you uh, lose just a bit of range of motion, specifically on the back. Um, because on some exercise, if I lose a bit of range of motion or press, it's like, uh, I, I'm here, <laughs> you know? But it doesn't quite work like that with the back. But so that would be the last thing I say. The, the cheating, it's like, uh, just be honest with yourself and explore how does exercises feel when you cheat this or this much, you know? you're gonna find that there's some sweet spot where you use some other muscles that help out, but not let them take over. That's where you want to be. Okay, guys, I have no idea how long it was. Hope it was decent. Um, yeah, please let me know what muscle group you'd like to see next. Like and comment, always fun to read. And I do holistic bodybuilding coaching, getting jacked and stacked mentally, physically, spiritually, working on ourselves, body, mind and soul, becoming that man or woman that just is jacked because that's the person they are, okay? Nothing like the body without the person behind it. All right, so if you're interested, you can send me a DM or email me, it's in the description below. I have a training book too, everything philosophy, technique, mindset related. You need to become a self-reliant, jacked and stacked individual. You know guys, all these videos I do, they're long and I really, I'm not trying to keep anything from you. Like you gotta pay for those things. All it is, is like with my book, it's everything collected and more structured and with coaching, it's of course more personal and back and forth and continuous like that. But yeah guys, I, uh, well, I don't know what more I wanted to say. Please subscribe for more content about fitness, fast and losing weight, building muscles, self-improvement, stoicism, and mental health, philosophy, spirituality, mindset. It is a mindset, guys. To be jacked, you gotta have a demon back. Peace.